Hello YouTube, I am back with another video. This time I'm actually going to be doing the art book video that I've been saying that I'd be that I will do eventually for the past month. And I did say I'll do it this month in September, so here it is. I finally got the equipment, I got the lighting. But anyway, I will let's just get to the video. Um I will be dividing this video into one, two, three, four, five parts. I'm going to first be talking about my comic book related art books, then my manga art books, then my, like, say concept art, video game art books, then anatomy art books, then the last section is going to be random things that I have that doesn't really fit in any particular category. That being said, let's start. Okay, so the first art book that I want to look at would be... Adam Hughes cover run. So I think I mentioned this having this book when I did my artist analysis of Adam Hughes, but I will say that this art book is absolutely amazing. I love his posters. Or the I think he, these are like um comic book um covers that he has done. I believe it's, um yes, they are. Um really like this. You see his development when he first started it in you know the career and you could really see how he developed as an artist, like with the style. Like if you look at his work, say, oh, what's a good illustration? Uh, this one, classic. The uh, this is probably one of the more well um, known Catwoman covers or variant covers. And if you look back in the beginning, what he's done, like say this, it's night and day. Um, I will say if you really like to like see good comic book illustrative artwork get this art book he I got this for over a hundred dollars um, I don't see it anymore like I don't know if you're gonna be able to get this anywhere else your best bet would be Amazon um, hopefully you can find it relatively cheap I don't think you're gonna find it on any any less than a hundred dollars but um yeah check this out um, these are going to be very brief, quick, like, overview since I have a ton of art books, so, yeah, come on, the DC Comics art of Adam Hughes. Yeah, get this, if you have the time and money, really good art book. On to the next one. The next art book is going to be All Point Beauties by Frank Cho. Again, another one I mentioned in Anonymous Analysis, this book, so... There's a lot of nudity, nudity in it, so I'm gonna be, you know, censor that. So, gonna open the pages very slow, like so. <laughs> the editing is like ridiculous. But what I like about this art book is that you really see the aspect, like the area that Frank Cho does best, and that's his cross hatching. And you get to see like step by step of how he develops his illustrations with nothing just with a ballpoint pen he it I, I will say it doesn't really work well as a how to do or how to draw book because it's not really teaching you per se it's literally just telling you what to do like oh you draw the figure then you cross hatch then you cross hatch again then you cross hatch again that's literally what this book is saying and it has an instruction it has like it goes a bit in depth but these are like literally one or two sentence explanations of what he's doing. Um, I will say, get this art book just to see his artwork and like see like the progression of like how he goes about doing these ballpoints. Definitely don't get this as a means to you know learn how he does it. Um, then he has the obligatory interview at the end. You know more illustration pieces. How he goes from this to this. And then this to this. Um, I really love the red ink and his um, like inking style for like the things that aren't the figure, like this, the fabric. It's it's really good, and he's really good with anatomy. Frank Cho, I think I got this. I got this on the official Flask. Flask, yeah. Website was was ten nine ninety five. Not too expensive. Hardcover. Worth it if you want to see this man's artwork. Really good. And um, yeah, Frank Cho, on to the next one. This book is huge, so I'm gonna try to 
fit this in the frame. Give me a second. Uh, I don't want to see. I don't want you guys seeing my entire desk. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll just have to work with this. But um, yeah, drawing beautiful women. The Frank, the Frank Chung method. The studio edition. Now, this book is huge, so you're gonna see at the corners is a bit worn and like you know used. So don't don't judge me, please. This this book has gone through hell and back. But um, this book I would say is more of a how to draw book as well. Like, well, it's a, it's a better how to draw book than the previous one. Contents it goes over the. Oh my god, you. Okay, yeah, let me just. I won't be able to show the entire page, so just bear with me. But um, he goes over the eight heads method. If I could bring this up. Yep, eight heads. Talks about doing the basic, you know, construction, things like that. I really like his proportions. Like, I, I will say, manga needs to learn more from western material and comics need to learn more from like say manga like we they need to blend because i swear some of the, some of the manga art styles are becoming very inbred if you know what i mean it tells you about some anatomy i'll say this anatomy is absolute um well it's very bare bones it doesn't teach you anything like he has like a sort of muscle dot um diagram for the glutes but like this is it like and bam, you're done. This is literally what he goes over for the anatomy. But that's the thing, it's, this book is not really for anatomy. Um, he goes over a bunch of things. My god, this really doesn't... <laughs> this book is so huge I can't even get it um, in the entire frame. But yeah, it talks a bit about his cross-hatching method, like in the previous book I've shown. Um, goes over more of his colored work. Um, this is the cover. And then, hold up, I think he has one more section. Yeah, just some like visual storytelling, things like that. Like a mini comic that he's done. But um, yeah, I, since I do like this man's work, um, I'm perfectly glad we're getting this huge studio edition for this book. Um, once again, hardcover, which was this. $150. I don't even remember paying this much. Was it on sale? I don't remember. But um, yeah, this was Drawing Beautiful Women, the Frank Chow Method. Um, get this if you want. I don't know if you want it in the big studio edition size, but um, yeah. Um, on to the next one. Ooh, snap. The next one is not really an art book, but it's for um, well, comics in general, and it's. Understanding Comics, The Invisible Art by the legend Scott McCloud. Now, uh, this artist, I'm so sorry for the glare, like, I need to have it at a tilt so the lighting doesn't, like, you know, blind you. But, um, Scott McCloud has done other art books for doing comics, but, um, I actually was required to get this for class. He basically teaches you trades of comic book making, understanding panels, or sequential art in general and um yeah i would definitely say that this art book was quintessential in me for, well it helped with my artist analysis because well i need i needed something to teach me how to analyze comic book art how to analyze paneling or visual storytelling against sequential arts and all of that um, i would definitely say if you want to like have a better um grasp of understanding comics or at least making comics since well that's what i sort of was taught to do um yeah this book is definitely worth it i would definitely say find a way to get it whether in your local bookstore online ebay amazon whatever just find a way to get it but um yeah on to the next book so this art book is more or less the same as the last one but it's Will Eisner's comics and its sequential art. Oh, this is more or less the same thing like the last one. It teaches you more, you know, how to read comic books, panel outline, panel structure, things like that. Um, 
What is this? I, I, I recently got this. This is actually a new art book that I got a while ago. Panel composition, functional perspective. You know, just basic stuff. I, I, more or less covers the same topics as the last art book. Um, getting this is not necessary. I just wanted to get it to see if it will cover any bases that the other previous comic book, like, you know, Scott McCloud's one didn't go over, so uh, don't get this. Uh, you can pass on this. You do not need this. Uh, Scott McCloud's one is much better. But, um, yeah, that's all for comics. Next is going to be my manga collection. So, okay, so to start off the manga collection or the manga art books, it will be Hoska Demizu's Yaksoku no Nebarando art book world. Um, however, you're supposed to say this. Um, I got this literally for the sole purpose of making the art analysis for Posca de Mizu. When, um, when I was ready to make it, I went to Kinokuniya, got this book just to have it, just to have a better grasp of her art. And I can't always do that since these art books could cost a lot. So if I'm looking at artists and I don't have the art book, I'm sorry. I can't always drop 50 to 100 bucks look, getting the art book just to look at them. But um, yeah, enough exposition. Let's take a look. Um, it has the intro pages of the first chapter. Nice. Um, I think this is one of the promotional art when it was in um, Jump magazine. It has the cast of characters: Emma, Norman, Ray. Uh, some like you know the color spreads. Once again, I'm sorry for the glare. I'm gonna have to like you know keep at an angle. But um, yeah, the colors, the colors are absolutely bright and vibrant, which is funny because this manga isn't so bright and vibrant. Once again, nice earth tones. Once again, the control of like hue and value. Like, notice it's a warm colors. They have cool colors, but it's a bit desaturated, and it's only like for a good 20% of the page here. Once again, another, this, uh, Posca loves to use sunsets and just warm colors in her work. Um, she did release a recent art book with work outside of the Promised Neverland, which I need to get to. Um, it's not Pwn, it's another art book, but um, I saw it in the stores, but I didn't have the money to get it at the time. But um, yeah, great artwork. I love this one right here, this one. If you know my artwork, or you know me in general, I love bright and vibrant colors. And this uh, absolutely amazing um, fan art. Yes, Tanjiro, um, Hinata, Emma, and this girl um, from the the ghost of hot, the hot, go, hot spring ghost, you know, uh, something like that. But um, Arigato. This um, uh, but the best part about this art book though, sketches. I cannot stress this enough. If I'm buying an art book, I want to see sketches, like behind the scenes work. She drew the classroom interior and the bedrooms. I don't even think we see a lot of these in the manga in the first place. But the fact that all this was planned out, it's just dedication. Like, she was dedicated to this world that she was building with Shirai, and I really like that. Okay, and we have some more... Um, sketches or behind the scenes of how she made some volume covers, some color spreads. Once again, I absolutely love this. More art books need to have this type of thing because I'm tired of seeing like an art book full of finished work, which you can sort of see online, but um, not all the time. And on the art books I have right there, you're gonna see um, why sometimes I'm just fine with that. But anyway, Posca de Mizu's Yaksok no Ravalan Art Book World. And yeah, until the next one. For the next art book, I have Kazue Kato's Iro Iro Art Book. Now, I did not have this for my artist analysis for her, considering that I was still moving at the time and this was actually in storage, but got this at Kino as well. 2017, $27.99, not too bad. It's a bit thin, so it shouldn't be too, it wasn't that bad. But um, yeah, we have this nice spread. 
Ah, the glare. Nice look at the color. Oh my god. Uh, when will I get to this level? So we have, yeah, this art from the Blue Exorcist. Really love her painting stuff and the aesthetic, like this Eastern Asian Oriental aesthetic with a nice mix of, you know, cool costume design. And the detail, like, I know this being digital art, you could sort of like get away with making mistakes much more easily, but it's still a huge time sink. Ooh, I like this one, the warm color palette. Um, once again, blue axis with a lot of blues being used, shadows will be, is usually by default a cool tone. And with the fire being blue, you have to keep in mind of the light source, the color of the light source and all that. Especially for this one here. Keep in mind like, oh, let me just actually bring it closer. With the blue, there will be tints of blue on his uniform. That's definitely important if like, to keep in mind the light source. Plus, I just like the good like, that kind of the blue and the red. Really nice. I want to see more of this ring and this uniform. We barely see this. Um, where we're at at the story, I think he starts wearing this, but I really like this. We don't see enough of this, if at all. By the way, she's on like a mini hiatus. Um, not for making manga, but from the Blue Exorcist when she's doing this other story, this horror story. And oh, I cannot wait until she comes back to this. We're at a hype peak moment in Blue Exorcist that I cannot wait for the next chapter. So yeah, these are just volume covers that she's done. This goes up to, I don't know what volume this went up to. Um, it doesn't say at the bottom. I think this is volume 13 or 12 or so? Could be wrong. Um, I don't know. Um, has some nice, you know, Twitter art. This is actually her art before the Lexus, and you, it really there, there, there are there are some changes to it, but I, you can there is a slight difference from like what she's done here and say like her most recent things like from here. What is this? <laughs> oh. But um, yeah, this is Kazuya Kato. This looks like it could have been a whole other like sci-fi story that she may have had in mind, but we will never know. So um, yeah, other artwork. Yo yo, by Kazuya Kato. Um, definitely like this art book. I really like her artwork. Her coloring is amazing. I definitely do not regret getting this. So yeah, on to the next one. Next, I'm getting all my females, well, maybe I shouldn't say that since she came out to be non-binary. Um, Koyoharu Gotoge, let me move this out the way. Yeah, Koyoharu Gotoge. I'm upset because the moment I finished the artist analysis, the book dropped. I was a bit upset, but it's here now, I'm glad I got it. Um, I took off the price. I think this was 30 or 40. I don't remember. But, um, maybe 50. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, Demon Slayer. It's the biggest thing next to BTS. I don't know. Um, we have the, the main cast as kids and the main cast as kids again. Shinko Hoko. Now, let's look. We have. No, this the beginning art. I actually have this in the screen. Let's go, Tanjiro. This is like the first art we've seen. You you could really tell that at the beginning, Tanjiro's hair was definitely much more like the strands were just more detailed in the beginning. But for making a weekly series, you could tell that um. Gotoge really had to eventually clump these up instead of making them very strainy. Like, especially, look how detailed Nezuko's hair is. Like, it definitely, she made, it got simpler, understandably so. Because for push, pushing out a weekly series, they're gonna be have to, some corners have to be cut. We have the pillars, Rangoku, the, the goat of 
this year or last year propelled Demon Slayer as the best movie in all time, I think, though. I think it beat, it beat your name, I think. That's where you're going. Tanjiro Inosuke. Oren Goku. So, Koyoro Gotoge's art style is very iconic because you see a lot of people making videos emulating the, I guess, the Demon Slayer art style. Or just Gotoge's art style. I, I can't wait. I'm assuming that they're gonna fully animate this. Is this spoiling? I hope it's not. It is. It totally is. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a feeling that for this final fight, they're gonna make it a movie. Or at the very least, they should make it a movie. Like, you know, Demon Slayer. The final, I don't know. The, the final fight, I don't know. We have the characters, we have the ending. I'll, t I'll say this right now. Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan, I was not heavily invested in the series, so I didn't really care for the endings that much. But I'll say this right now. There was nothing Gotoge could do, nor Hajime Isayama could have done, to make everyone love the ending. They were too hyped up. Nothing they could have done would make anyone happy, or everyone happy at least. So therefore, I wasn't too upset. You just have to realize that with a series this big, it's gonna come with people that you just can't make happy. Again, this red accent in his clothing, I I wish they kept that in anime. So this is very cool. And again, his hair was much more like has more strands to it. Like in later art is that more clumped up. Also I, 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 I prefer Tanji with longer hair, maybe it's just me. But um has some more pages. This is really nice. I don't know, is this supposed to represent blood? I don't know. This was... Oh yeah, this is the volume cover of volume 1, I think. Let me see. Yep, volume 1, volume 2, and so forth. His arc is coming up very soon. We're gonna see more of him later. More of him. Oh, this one. This should be... Yeah, this one's gonna come in the second season, I think. Um, yeah. More sketches, I'm telling you. Sketches are necessary. I like this is I really like the these um inked pieces. I'm assuming this is after Demon Slayer's publication or after it finished, considering um well I'm, I'm just assuming actually I, I don't know when because I, I don't recall seeing these images anywhere else. More the pillars, nice image here. <laughs> this is definitely spoiling, but everyone is with their their ship, their couple towards the end, I guess, question mark. Got them. We have a beach scene. We were not given a beach scene or episode in the anime or manga, so I guess uh, as a sort of final fan art, it's nice to have that, I guess. Very good ink to work. I think this was for the Year of the Pig. Um, I may be wrong with that. And then, yeah, the cover and back art. Some interview questions. And then, yeah, that was Koharu Gotoge's Kimetsu no Yaiba, Yaiba art book. So yeah, on to the next one. Okay, so for the next art book, I have the one and only Ishidesui, Tokyo Gozaki. Now I have the Japanese one, so it's very small, so I'm just gonna, you know, zoom in a bit. Okay, so um, yeah. I have oh no oh oh my god I need to get a new one. I'm probably gonna get the English one soon since I'm it's a lot larger and this is so small it's like the size of a manga. It's a lot of big. Okay. But um yeah 2006 is when I got it if you could see right over there. It was only ten dollars, so I guess it wasn't too bad for the size it wasn't. But um, I, prefer, I guess I prefer hardcover. But um, yeah. If you know, if you watch this channel, you know that Ishidesui is one of my biggest inspirations for his painting style. People call it messy, but I, I will say it. It works. It just works. Like no lines. It's all paint. It's like a watercolor type style. And, he could switch it up sometimes with here having more harder edges and flat tones with Ayato. 
his angry face. Or one of my favorite characters in the series. The foreshadowing with the... Uh, I, 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 I think I spoiled enough, so... It doesn't matter. <laughs> I already spoiled plenty of things in this video already. But with this eye covered, like the one-eyed king. But, um... Yeah. Kaneki. Yeah, these are uh, yeah, these are the volume covers. If I'm not mistaken, yep, these are the volume covers. The promotional art for the first volume, or the you know inside cover art. Yo, look at his style, or what it was before. That hand is very wonky. I don't know how to describe it. It it definitely it definitely was a preliminary stage in his art style. Like, look at this. Look at this. Well, it's not bad, but what it <laughs> this this definitely shows like a bit of like early stages in its development. This mask, though, I really like this image. Okay, more image, more illustrations. Juzo, actually, did I say that Juzo is my favorite character? What am I thinking? Amazing character development. In fact, a lot of characters had amazing character development in this. Marken, Rize, a character that barely shows up IRL in the manga. Right, so. This one, I really like this one. The perspective, like you're looking up, you see the sky. Like it's at a. The angles at a slight tilt. I really like that. And you see the mini process of how we. how we did it. But yeah, this was the original Tokyo Ghoul Zaki. And he ended up doing another one for Tokyo Ghoul Lee, which is the next one. Bam! Tokyo Ghoul Zaki Lee. You can't even see because of the glare. This. Oh my god, I, I think I got this years ago too. I don't have the price on it anyway, but look at this. Uh, these sleeves kill my art books like oh oh my god age what has time done to you but um yeah let's just take a dive we have this calendar thing you know like a nice you know calendar thing that i don't know if you can work out this appropriate edges i'm not gonna risk it because i think i spent 50 dollars on this We have the publication history of the recent Tokyo Ghoul to the end of Re. The first promotional image of Re, when we saw Heise, which was, I don't know, was it obvious that it was Ken? Because I think everyone knew that. First couple of images. Oh, look at this sky. This painter. Amazing. The volume cover, and this was the back illustration. Heise, Arma, and this character that I don't remember too much. The quinks and the main ghouls like Torso and Nutcracker and I forget and well this character. Um, the Quinks God. Once again, I feel like he's slowly refining his style to what he wants it to be at this point in the story. Like look how crazy this is, the colors, it's all splotchy and like it's like he throws random brushes on, like, as he's working, but it, once again, I, I don't know how to describe it besides it works. Tsukiyama, amazing character development too, my god. <sighs> Along, uh, yeah, I think at this point it's the mix of the volume covers and the, like, inside promotional art. Like, color spreads for, for the magazine. This is an odd book that I should have taken more care of. This. It's like this line art is the sketch. It's, it's nothing but a sketch. And he's like painted like an overlay layer. And like, hold on, let me bring this closer. These are just random like strokes. Like, like with some um, like a grain effect. And he, he gave this in as a finished piece, like, this is finished artwork. I, 
I love it. Hooray. More taco. This, how oh, this character fell from grace for me. Ah, Tokyo Ghoul Route A. The ending was literally the best part about this anime adaptation. Can I even call it an adaptation? It sort of did its own thing. But yeah, this is when I think it was via this ending that I truly appreciated Ishidesu's art. Like, look at this. Like, I love this beautiful effect. Warm colors, cool colors. Like, absolutely stunning. Yeah, this composition is very cool. Nice foreshortening on Kaneki's hand. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. I would say my favorite ending has to be the one with, um, you know what I mean? This. I love this. What is th This is insane. He did like a animation, like, with frames and like, colored each of the frames in like, unique ways. And yeah, I really like this portrait too. Really pa painted really well. Yeah, the rest, um, he, oh, he did like a, like, whole deck with the Tokyo Ghoul characters and so forth and then yeah the rest are just more or less some images he did on Twitter because he is somewhat active on Twitter and yes I'm reading Choji and X I'm, I'm, I'm up to date with that like don't worry I'm on it but um, yeah Tokyo Ghoul Zaki really I probably need to get a new art book since I'm this one's tearing apart. These dust leaves, they ruin my reports. Or at least the visual appeal of these. But um, yeah, get it if you like his artwork. And yeah, on to the next one. Next is the Jack John Johnu John Complete Collection. Now, the moment I knew that. Ishida Sui was making this. I, you know, I already had to get on this. Um, I think this is a otome dating type game. It's about singing, I guess. The main character is like, like has to pick between guys or girls and things like that. Comes with a folded illustration, a very, very, very long, one. like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is super long. Starring all the characters that show up. Now, I've never played it, and I'll be honest, I don't think I want to. But I had to get it because Ishida Su, and I love his work. Although, I have to keep it a buck. I have to, you know, keep it real. I'm not that happy with this art book, if that makes sense. Um, and to be honest, I don't know what I was expecting, considering that it's technically um, artwork for a game. Therefore, it's gonna, of course, have sprites like this. But um, and of course, the obligatory like images for like certain scenes. But I don't know what I was like. I don't know what I was expecting. Like, this is all part for the course for um, art for like Otome games, like dating games. Like you have the characters. We have some images, we have like sprites here, we have like text and dialogue, or you know, songs, because this is a singing dating game. Um, yeah, we have obligatory art, scenes, roots, are these song lyrics? No, no, no. Um, I, although I do appreciate this for the fact that Ishida Sui was highly invested in this because by the end of Tokyo Gori, like, he was very burnt out and I think he had this as a sort of passion project. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I did know he put his all into this and I appreciate him because I love his work. Like, this man can literally do whatever he wants and as long as he just does art, I'll appreciate it. I'll buy any art book that this guy makes. But, um, yeah. Jack John Complete Collection. <sighs> Amazing artwork. Anyway, on to the next book. Mm -hmm. For the next art book I have is The Art of Makoto Shinkai. 
A sky longing for memories. Now, we all know the legend Makoto Shinkai did things like your name, five centimeters, like, what was it called? I, I, I'm forgetting. Five centimeters a second? Or, you know, I, I forget what it was called. Five centimeters per second. But, um, usually I sort of use it as a reference book for, like, say, skies and scenery. Like, if you want to see, like, really good, like, establishing shots, splash pages, or, like, scenes with ambience, like, scenery, ugh, this book is the go-to. This night city scene. Like, this guy is, this man's skies, like, oh my god. Like, the amount of color, the color variation. Yeah, I would say definitely use this to get, like, the mind running, like, to get like very inspired of nothing else. You can also use like use it as a sort of reference. Like, oh what does this guy look at a evening or a day? Like how does the light affect trees or like how the shadow affects or like we said shadows most times or not will be cool. Oh, the oh, this is such these shots are so good. A nice, like, night or evening shot. Really good. Like, on the silhouette of the electric poles and the tree. But, um, yeah, I definitely, I use this, like, when I'm just, like, working on a sky, when I get inspired, I go for this book. And if you want to know my opinions on your name and whether or you and all that jazz, um, they're all right. <laughs> um, I sort of like weathering with you a bit more, although people might kill me for that. Um, if you want to know why, um, well, ask me in the comments. Maybe I'll answer why. Anyway, there has a Makoto Shinkai. A sky longing for memories. How beautiful. Okay, so the next art book is going to be a bit weird, but the next two are going to be... No, not the next two. Well, this one's gonna be weird considering I don't know a lot of works that he's done, but um, I like this art style, and that is Shiro Miwa Gadgetry. Now, I saw this art book on the shelf. Is the price on it? Oh, it's not. Go figure. And um, I saw his artwork. I really like like the slick coolness it had, so I had to pick it up. And um, yeah. This, for me, this is the ideal art book. How, look how, not only does he have like nice good inked work, nice some colors work, like, you know, has a good index of like what he, what he's done, and all that, but what I love the best, sketches. He has so much pages dedicated to his sketches. Like, on pages on end, this is what I get art books for. Not for the complete images you see online, not for the complete images you see if with a quick Google search, this stuff. Because more times than not, these will not see the light of day. These, you have to get this um, the art book to see anything like this. Sure, some might be on Twitter and things like that. More times than not, if you want to see the inside scoop, get the art book. And like I said, support your favorite artist. Also, he did the uh, art cap designs for Keys Niver. Keys. Oh my god, that's like the. Um, uh, ignore that, because I'm not editing that out. But um, yeah. Um, the main character was it Agata Katsuhira. And he did. What's his character name? Sonozaki Noriko. Chidori, very mid anime, not bad, but not good. Better than Dar Darling and the Franex, better than that, but it, it was all right. Again, more sketches, really slick character designs, I would say. Like something reminiscent to like say, um, Kaguro days or Macaque City actors. Um, this guy could easily do, um, 
character design for like a JRPG, nice urban type character design. I really like that. Like the jeans, the pens, Patrick, really good. Color variants. This could be like color like swaps for fighting games. Like this, this guy is a really good character designer. More sketches. I honestly, like I live for this. Gets the creative juices flowing. And you and for through seeing the sketches, you sort of like are able to get into the artist's head. Like, what lines does he do? Like, what lines does he stress? Like. Really good artist. Not my one of not like my top five. I wouldn't even put in my top ten favorite artists, but um top twenty I would say, maybe. He's a really good artist, but yeah. Anyway, on to the next one. This one is for Ghost in the Shell. Read me 1995, 2017. So we're not gonna have um the latest one. The one that um, Ilya Krishnov did the designs for. My god, this glare. So, um, yeah, I'll just be for the original movie, Stand Alone Complex, and Arise. <sighs> Arise, Christ. Um, this one, I'll say, is not too great of an art book either, since um, it's literally just clips of the show and movies. But, um, it goes through um, the original 1995 movie, Sequel Innocence, Standable Complex, Second Gig, Standable Complex, Solid State Society, Arise, Arise, Arise again, and this new movie. Oh, I really love this movie. This is really good. These sketches are nice. I just wish they had more dedicated pages to this instead of like intertwined with like clips or like still images from the animation like it's I don't know some some of this feels lazy once again like some like sprites or character like like stills <laughs> um not bad I, I, I have to sort of deal with the 3d animation but yeah Ghost in the Shell it's definitely well part of the reason why I'm into the sci-fi genre this influenced me heavily that and you know herbal proxy and you know a whole bunch of other things but that's for another video on to the next one now the next book i have is this one kara kara or is that what it's called yeah um i don't know what the artist's name is but this is the art book for don't don't tell me what all laughing under the clouds I've never watched it. I've never read it. I just literally saw this in Kinokuniya and had to get it because I loved the aesthetic. Ugh, this art. It reminds me a lot of um, Shiro Milo's a bit. But uh, very clean line art. Now, this is an example of an artist that knows its setting and builds a nice group of characters, character designs around that setting. Um, Demon Slayer did that well too, because that was in the Taisho era. This is in the Meiji Restoration era, so you expect these hats, the uniforms, and all that. Which is funny because the Meiji Restoration movement is, I think, after the Taisho era? Or was it before? Please correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was after. But yeah. Nice black and white, like very good. Yep, the police uniforms and all that. Character designs like this that represent the age or the setting, really good. I hate it. I hate it when, like, back at school, people just do character designs and add these unnecessary like details just because they look cool. Sorry, it's not about looking cool. It's about cohesion. Sorry, like you can't just have your character look buck wild for no reason. Unless, you know, that is the purpose. Yeah, I just really like this oriental type aesthetic. Nice manga page coloring. 
Or you could switch it up and have like an oriental like traditional while having a sci-fi twist. Once again, sci-fi. I love how it incorporates or how it mixes with other genres really well. You cannot do that with fantasy sometimes. You cannot. Sci-fi, I don't know what it's with it with sci-fi, but it mixes well with so much things. But um, yeah, this is Laughing Under the Clouds. I will one day read it or watch it or who knows maybe i won't i don't know i just know that i have the artwork because i like the art and here it is i think it was just 30 40 dollars i don't know i know they have the yen price here but i don't know if it converts really accurately over here but um yeah kata kata um this probably says something but i don't know yeah her aunt oh wait that's it for all my manga so yeah the next section will be my concept art books for like video games and or movies so yeah let's head to it okay so to start off the concept art section of this video we're gonna start with spider-man into the spider-verse the best spider-man movie in my opinion to this date um recently the trailer for spider-man no way home just got dropped and that movie could have Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, the whole nine yards, and it will still be hard pressed to beat this movie. It is that good. But um, yeah, it has a nice, nice cover. Let's go through some of the introductions. I really like the colors used in this movie. Very, vi very vibrant and yeah, very interesting. Nice shot of New York and being a New Yorker, I guess if I could call myself that, this this really captures the vibe of the city. Got some nice storyboard shots. This is, this page is ripped off for some reason. I'm just gonna stick that back in there. Nice some concept character design work of who Miles is. I really like how they went through a lot of renditions, like lots of gestures to really get the character down. So, like, I really like it. Nice interior. Yeah, just like shot scenes from the movie. Again, oh, we really like this, how they utilized them, how they had a specific color scheme for the spider sense. It really, it was a nice visual representation of it good um, expression, like these expressions are, are really good. Also, I love the rendering style. Again, I'm all there for like messy means of rendering. Again, let me bring this in frame. Good character designs, nice expressions, gestures, and all of that. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this was... Spider-Verse. I would definitely say get this movie, not this movie, what am I saying? Can you speak? Get this art book if you like the movie. Get this art book if you wanted to see really good character designs and just, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, what more I can say? Just get it. Okay, next we're going to be going into games and we're going to start with Dragon's Crown. Now, I got this, I, I will say, I'm saying this for all my art books, but I got this a long time ago. Look at the wear and tear this has been through. <laughs> But um, I got this when I pre-ordered the game way back when. Um, by if you don't know Vanillaware, Vanillaware is a really I don't know if it's more well known now. Like they just dropped not recently just dropped the game, but they draw um, Aegis Run or Thirteen Sentinels. Yeah, um, the artist being George Kamitani, known for his extreme proportions and how he pushes it. He really pushes it, but it's, I would say, it's anatomically correct, well, not correct, accurate, um, is accurate a good one? Anyway, he, he knows what he's doing, he's pushing all the right things to make, to achieve really good character design. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure you've seen his artwork floating around here and there. He has a really interesting painting style. I think we all seen the sorceress if you're into anime and manga at one point due to her, her you know, assets. And um, yeah, basically goes through all like the character and illustrations. Really good. I need to get more stuff um, from George Comiton or just more stuff from Vanillaware. Did he did like most of the art for Vanillaware, if not all the art? Like if they dropped the art book for um, 
like say Odin Sphere, if that's what it's called, or um, Muramasa, I, I'd definitely get on it because I just really love Zarwa. And yes, I'm gonna do an analysis on him relatively soon. I just don't know when because I feel like that'd be another long video. Also, nice drawing of the food. Any game that has food in it, like it's really good. It reminds me, it gives me Final Fantasy vibes a bit. But yeah, very thin art book, really good. Um, it was worth pre-ordering the game to get this art book, if nothing else. But um, yeah, on to the next one. Okay, so sticking with video games, we're gonna go to Overwatch. <laughs> I played this a bit with friends, but um, didn't really get into it as most of humanity did. It, it was nice. The characters is what it got me sucked in. It, I don't really care for um, team first person death matches and things like that, so it wasn't really didn't really stick with me, but I do did like the story and the lore. Nice Shadow Tracer. Basically it goes through all these characters. They're all colorful and distinct. It is very hard to like have so much characters and not have them be the same or samey. But um yeah, it goes through characters. I really like this character by the way. Yeah, Winston, really like this character. Something about the smart, brutish character. Something about that character, like template, is really appealing to me. I don't know why. Um, Widowmaker, this like a Tracer, everyone. Tracer is very iconic. But the perfect icon for the figure, especially with the color design, the oranges and the brown earth warm colors with the blue like this blue and orange complement colors really make this a an iconic character for the game yeah this is a very thick art book it has so much material like not like vehicle design weapon design environment yeah like I, I only wish that the game like they'll like went more deeper into the lore instead of having all that information in like outside media outside of the game but hey it was still a fun game for most but um yeah that was overwatch on to the next one next one we have is the art of horizon zero dawn i think i mentioned this already i definitely mentioned this already but i love the sci-fi genre and how and how it just mixes well with everything the newest one should be coming out eventually for the ps5 or did it already come out? I don't know. I don't. I need to keep track of the gaming news now. Nice area and establishing shots. Got the main character, Allo Alloy, Alloy, Alloy. I would say I don't know. Amazing! I love this. Oh, oh, this is so good. This is wallpaper worthy. More like um, asset design or prop design. Characters. Now this is all nice and all like seeing the different tribes and, like the aesthetic and the areas but I'm sorry I, I will always be a sucker for the machines yeah the, these this was such I said it before how sci-fi weaves into so much different other concepts it, I don't know why how sci-fi is able to do this so well Oh my god, almost like how they molded them or shaped them into animals, like really, really good. More beautiful like landscape, like this is another wallpaper worthy game. This game is an absolute spectacle. But um, yeah, more on the environment center. Yeah, I'm gonna try and make the, go, go through these books very quickly because Ooh, I don't want to spend too long for each book. But yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn. On to the next one. So the next couple of art books that I'm going, that I'm going to be looking at are mainly going to be Persona, or anything Shin Megami Tensei, or any art book that Shig Shigenori Sojima has done work for. So we're going to be starting out with the art of Persona 3, the original, not Fez or Portable, the original Persona 3. And I got this back from a friend during middle school. And 
I'm assuming that this was going to be what the original protagonist was going to look like. I may be wrong, but it's nice to see some sketches of what used to be and now, but then now what currently is. Some wallpaper things that I think back then, if you went on their website, you could have downloaded. Nice winter outfits and summer outfits. And yeah, I think I mentioned this in his artist analysis, but if you look at his rendering style, he doesn't render like this anymore. Like, everything had a much more painterly style, like this one for Igus. You could vivid, like, accurately or clearly see the brush strokes he had, and like, say the hair and the torso. He doesn't do this, he definitely does more cell shaded work now. If anything, when he, when he does paint like this, it's more reserved for a single, like, one one off pieces. Here's some character concepts of the main character. You probably hate her. With some sprites of her. Junpei. And we have the personas at the side. There's some sprites. Let's see, this goes over the main cast of characters, some character expressions, and the personas. The back here, there's some environment art, like a dark hour, dormitory. Part of this and all that. And yeah, very thin book for the first Persona 3 game. I think this came with the game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, on to the next one. Next, we've got Persona 3 Dancing Moonlight, Persona 5 Dancing Starlight, the official visual book. Now, it just goes over the main cast again, with their character art, their poses and things like that. It was really nice seeing the Persona 3 cast, like, redrawn better again. Like, it, it's just nice seeing them, like, drawn with more updated character art. Got some more... This is a, I think this is very cute, like, seeing the characters in different costumes. Got some more storyboarding things. I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of the first half being like snippets of the gameplay, but I guess that makes sense since this is a dancing rhythm game, I guess. So, I guess this isn't necessary to show. Um, yeah. Oh, got this Akino Knia too. $37.99. Alright. On to the next one. Next, we got the art of Persona 5. Um, the dust jacket, so we got moved, but, um, yeah. This is probably one of my favorite art books, because it has almost everything I would like an art book to have. Nice character of my character. Nice box art. Now, we have Poppins, the iconic Persona 5 aesthetic that it was trying to emulate. Love. I love these sketches. Once again, an art book needs to have like this loose work. It really gets in, gets you into the artist's head. What was I suppose was going to be the main character at one point, which is very interesting to see. This would be character for. Oh, oh is it? I thought this is character. Oh, the main character for um, Trinity Soul for a second. Unless it is. Nice sketch work gestures and they do this for the personas as well and the other characters and again yeah this persona aesthetic with the black and white I see so much people mimicking this aesthetic which is fair because it's actually really nice speaking of rumors saying persona 3 is about to get it's gonna get a remake and personally I don't know if that should necessarily happen. Ideally, I just want them to go to Persona 6 if that happens because I swear if you get another rendition of the Persona 3 cast, uh, I think I want to lose it. Anyway, now on to the next one. Now we have Catherine, Full Body, Visual and Scenario Collection, Venus Trinity. Now, I've only played Catherine on the PS3. I didn't get the, I didn't get Full Body because I wasn't gonna get another, I think, $60 game, just have this one character be there, and maybe slightly extra content. 
the game was full and finished for me as it was. Got some nice art. Got the cell phone pics that C. Catherine sent us. If, if you want to know who I went for, if we went with uh, K. Catherine, sorry, but she was definitely more wife material for me. The original box art for the PS3 and 360. I really like how they that they did that. Like different depending on which version of the game you got, it gave you a different box art. Uh, we have Joker in it now. Nice addition. Nice to bring like callbacks to different games. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, just some more conceptual art for like, I think, more of the animated cutscenes. Storyboards, and yeah. Catherine Full Body, on to the next one. So for the last book we have for Shigenori Sojima is his artwork from 2010 to 2017. Now, the problem with having all the other art books and having this one is that they're gonna, there's going to be some overlap in the artwork that shows up, but at the same time, like, yeah, like we saw the PS3, PS4 box art on the Persona 5 art book, but it's nice to have like a compilation of his work throughout. Detective Nanako. Did I say Nanako? Naoto. I never read this. I don't know what this is like about per se, but I hope it's good. <laughs> this is something that they should have animated personal. We got the Persona 4 anime. I think these were the DVD, Blu ray box art. Yeah. And he had to defend it for Hatsune Miku and. Noel from Blaze Blue. I should really get a Arxis and Marks art book eventually. And then, yeah, just, uh, ooh, just some interview stuff. And, yeah. Got this $39.90, $38.99. Got this win. 2018. Yeah. Let me see. Let me. Yeah. Oh, they have two desk jackets? Okay. I guess to make it extra, extra safe. And yeah, on to the next one. So the next one is going to be a big one, and it is the art for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Not the best Zelda game, it's on top five. It, my best one is probably going to be the obvious answer, which is Jura's Mask, but that's because my childhood, well not my childhood, but there was a point that I emulated the entire game, beat it, and it was the best experience I had. But yeah, let's get into it. You have the map of all of... Is this place still called Hyrule? Oh, General Hyrule. Open your eyes. Illustrations, once again, I really love the brush, this oil brush texture style that this artist did ah, amazing box I cannot wait for the sequel to come out the trailers dropped and we're hype now we're gonna take the the story up to the skies so I'm very hyped to see that we got the old classic Zelda 1 Zelda 2 link it, passing on to the more modern link it's been a running theme with game series like the old version, like meeting up with the more modern version of the incarnations, happened with Sonic. It didn't happen with Mario yet, but I can imagine it happening. Ooh, really love this. Like I love the the brush strokes. How they left that in here. Oh, damn the glare. But um, yeah. Let me go flipping through real quickly. It goes over the the champions. Ganon, Zelda, Plank. Look how funky this link is gonna be. Like this would be like a 21st century style link. We have some more environments. Yeah. 
has a bit of a history with uh, Zelda lore, or concept part, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, I really like looked, flipping through this art book for some inspiration. More interview stuff. And yeah, that was Breath of the Wild. I don't remember how much I paid for this. I think it was like 50 or 60 bucks, considering how big this is. And it's the. the yeah. But um, yeah, that was Breath of the Wild. On to the next one. On to now, the art of Final Fantasy IX with Zidane or Zidane, however you want to pronounce it. And yeah, the other characters. People are in deadlock with whether Final Fantasy IX, 10, or 7 being the best ones. Some people add 6 into it, but personally, I don't have an opinion on my best Final Fantasy. I have a deep connection with Final Fantasy XII in particular, but um, yeah, got Phoebe, got Freya, Phoebe is like, what the hell is this? Oh, it's bigger than Final Fantasy X. Yeah. Um, yeah, Every, all the characters here look very cheapy, like, well, it makes sense, this is still on the PlayStation 1 era, I think, they can make full-on rendered models or like or so forth and this is before Tetsuya Nomura got a good hold of the character design of the series but um yeah you know what this art reminds me of? it reminds me of um, art from Posca de Mizu like warm earth tones and the fantastical environment got some like item prop design Yeah, definitely, um, I'm not gonna say go out and find Final Fantasy IX and play it yourself. Again, it is considered one of the better games in the series, but, um, I have the art book. I think, I didn't buy this, someone gave me this. I think it was a, the, a friend from middle school, too. But, um, yeah, this art book survived quite well, despite me, well, not too well, but it survived despite for how long I had it. Yeah. Final Fantasy IX, on to the next one. And staying on track with Final Fantasy, we have Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm, a realm Reborn, the art of, I'm gonna say this wrong, Eorz, Orzea, Orzea, uh, whatever. Um, now, I did not play Final Fantasy XIV, but A Realm Reborn, mainly because I know that this game will be absolutely addicting. This game is a productivity and time sponge. Well, as most MMOs are, to be fair. But I really like the art, maybe the artist for this game. Really nice character art. Like, I don't know how these guys do it. Usually for concept art, I'm all in for like, especially for MMOs, I like seeing the different races, like male, female variants, and then, with a different with a variation of different races. Yeah, once again, weapon design. All in lockstep with most Final Fantasy or JRPG concept art. Drawing the monsters and the weapons. The monster minions. Ounce, I mean. Chocobos, obligatory in every Final Fantasy. Once again, how much did I pay for this? $46 in 2017. But um, yeah. Once, maybe in the future, when I have more money and time, I'll play this. But for now, I am broke and every second is vital for me. You can sort of see my reflection in this. Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> On to the next one. Okay, so for the final book for like concept art collection or concept art books is the art of DreamWorks animation. Now, personally, this is sort of a, a like a cheap move on my part because I saw individual art books for like say Kung Fu Panda, Madagascar, Shrek, and all these stories, but this was a quick way to get like a quick one quick book for all of these. But so um, yeah, let me zoom this camera off if I can. 
got ants. I also like the, oh this, oh, I absolutely love this. Nice control color palette of like purples, slight reds and oranges at the center here. This is what, The Prince of Egypt? Prince of Egypt, that was such a good movie. Christ, if you have not watched that, go watch it now. <laughs> oh, the Curse of the Were Rabbit. This animation style, like stop motion, is, I don't know why, but it always cracks me up, like, seeing it. Like, a wall is uncropped. Over the Hinge. Shrek the Third. Honestly, I stopped watching Shrek after the third movie, because it just started going down there. Going downhill, I mean. Shrek 2 being the best Shrek movie. I think everyone says that, but it's true. This is Kung Fu Panda. Really good movie series too. Like how to, how to Train a Dragon 2. Look at this love this landscape. Something I need to study. I really need to study like painting landscapes. Home with the booze. <laughs> like this was this was an interesting movie too, actually. But um yeah. Which I bought this for 950. Yeah. Not oh, too expensive. Um, yeah, that's it for concept art. Next, we'll be going on to anatomy and how to draw books. So let's get to it. Okay, so to start the anatomy section of this video, we have uh, The Book of a Hundred Hands by George B. Bridgman. Now, I got this from a friend when I was in art university. Um, he gave it, he sold it to me for, to me for like five bucks, which isn't bad. Like, I needed a book for, like, to see how hands are, like, different positions. It's, like, a very brief anatomy. This is definitely nothing too in-depth. It doesn't really teach you so much. I can show, like, muscles and, like, tendons and things like that. And nice, very nice. <clears throat> my god. I'm, I'm recording this morning, so sorry for my raspy voice. But all nice simplifications of the hands. Just get the gesture. And yeah, it goes with a quick bone structure, how to group like certain muscles or certain parts. It's a very thin book. And yeah, it's just nothing but hands. It goes over the different fingers, how they bend. And yeah, what is this? Oh. But um, yeah, that's this book. Book of 100 Hands. Nothing too crazy, very thin. So yeah, on to the next one. Next we got, this is gonna, I'm gonna pair these two books up because it's Andrew Loomis's Figure Drawing for All It's Worth, as well as Andrew Loomis's Drawing the Head and Hands. Now these two books, if there's any book that I suggest you getting first out of all the art books I've looked at today, it'd be this one, then this one. Andrew Loomis is like absolutely well renowned for his art books and how many people have learned or like used him as a sort of point of reference to drawing anything. And if you look at my art or like how I construct the figure, particularly, I always I love this mannequin frame. It's very useful. And of course, as all anatomy books, he sort of goes into like the muscles, goes over the proportion, skeleton, all things very necessary to know. I will say if you want to do like very accurate figures and forms, they tell them you have to learn realism first, and I can see why that'd be annoying, but I would, I would at least say learn basic construction at a you know at a base level like learn the basic perfect proportions like do the thirds and divide them and then you can break them into whatever style you like it doesn't hurt at least i would say to learn like a nice set of standard proportions and breaking them however you see fit and then you could like as this page goes on to do like show like you can like distort them and change them however you see fit. I really like how 
he like the proportions on a woman's head is placed like I, I still need to practice nailing this because I need to work on the the female characters that I draw. But um yeah it goes over different ages. It goes over hands too. And um yeah. Oh my god, I love how this is rendered. Oh my god, it's so good. Got this at Kinokunia too. They actually ordered this or they ordered one of these specifically for me. 2018, 40 bucks, but yeah. And yeah, those are the two bonus books. On to the next one. Next we got another anatomy book. Classic Human Anatomy, The Artist's Guide to Form, Function, and Movement by Valerie L. Winslow. Now, I don't know why, maybe it's the artist inside me, but I need to get like, I always get a ton of anatomy books, and I don't know why. I would say this is definitely more an objective look at anatomy, in terms of, like, it, it, it's good we go over the classic, like, the muscles, the, they named them all. They go over like at a <laughs> looks like they go to at a cellular level. And they show how the muscles act when they're like flexed or you know loose. It goes and over the parts of the skull, more facial muscles, over the eyes, the rib cage, the you know it goes over all sorts of anatomy, the hands. I would say you don't need all these anatomy books, quite frankly, you just need one really good one that you like, and I'm just study the hell out of it. Those are the proportions, probably gonna have to censor that. And um, yeah, anyway, yeah, classic human anatomy. On to the next one. So now this art book makes me laugh every time because there was a controversy behind this on Twitter, or Reddit, or wherever, and it is... Stone House's Anatomy by SuperAnnie.com by John Kilman Sook. So harder, I don't know if I'm well. And the thing about this anatomy book is that it received backlash for being misogynistic or racially profile. I, personally, I get anatomy books to learn anatomy. I don't care for the the why. Basically, it, it goes over like anatomy like most anatomy books do it's also very thick my god like oh my god my technology is making noise again um yeah it goes over basic anatomy i would say this artist goes over more eastern asian features this is nice i think you find a time lapse of him painting all these faces one by one but um yeah he mainly does on the eastern asian features well, she makes sense, he's a Korean artist, and, you know, he goes over facial muscles, and, um, goes over the different types of noses you'd have, like, more eth ethnic features, Caucasian, Asian, African, and people have problems, with, um, what's the page, I think it's page 81, yes, here, about Asian eyes and Western eyes, and it goes in and on about why Asian eyes are thin, and and I'll tell you, I'll say this right now, I don't care for the why. I don't care why Asian eyes are like this or why Caucasian eyes are like that. I care for the how. I want to know how these eyes act. I want to know how the muscles are when they're contracted. I want to know how, like, how, how you could flex the arm or how far you could bring them. Like, I don't care why it's like that. Or maybe, maybe some food for thought wouldn't be too bad, but... Like, I want to know how the arm is when it's flexed. Like, I want to know how the muscles are when it's at this angle. Like, I don't know, want to know that, well, Asian arms are like this because, like, no. <laughs> That's so funny. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, quite frankly, it's another anatomy book that I have for some reason. And those are the muscles, like most anatomy books do. Once again, you don't need all these anatomy books, you just need one good anatomy book and study the hell of it. This was Stonehouse's Anatomy by this guy from Super Annie. And yeah, on to the next one. I think that was all the anatomy books that I have. So next we're gonna go to the next part, which is just gonna be random one-off books. So yeah, on to the next one. Okay, so for one-off books that I have, to start off, I have 
Tandem, the mini sketchbook by Nicholas Draper Ivy. And yeah, this sketchbook. I picked this up from uh, Anime NYC, I think two years ago, I think. And yeah, basically has his sketches of Spider-Man and Spider-Man. Into the, oh my god, into the Spider-Man, into the Spider-Verse. And yeah, he did the, if you know him, most of you maybe do, um, he did the album cover for Black Panther. I still make cry artwork. Like Gohan, Final Fantasy VII, Ash to Boy, get Akuma. And yeah, I feel like this this man has an endless supply of character designs. He was he got oh my god, I took also making my noises. He did on black versions of Cloud, Sephiroth, and Tifa, and yeah, white version of Barrett since he was originally black. Did the near automata characters. And yeah, he he has like a really good character design or like an, a good sense for it. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for he's, right now he's doing the comic for Static and quite frankly I'm, I'm waiting for this guy to be called to do character designs for a video game one day because like he does like weapon prop design, different variations, like he has a he does he has a really good style too. And yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, but um yeah, this is a small sketchbook. I think he has a, another one out that I need to pick up eventually. Or maybe one day he have a more thicker hardcover sketchbook. Which I'll definitely pick up because I really like this man's work. Really good. On to the next one. Okay, so this is gonna be a shout out from my friend Alex because he picked this up for me when he went to I think Japan or Korea or somewhere. The point is he got me this. <sighs> now I can explain. Him, he wanted me to be into K-pop twice in particular. And um got this, this sticker, this card. CD. Um, I'm not particular into K-pop, not that much at least, but he got me this because he wanted me to, like, he wanted me to accept me being <laughs> a fan of this group twice, and I'm, I'm not biting, I'm not, I'm sorry, like, these are all beautiful women, I'm sure, and, um, yeah, I, I, I had to show it. I had to put it in the video. It's technically an art book, I guess, or a photo book. Um, it, it, it's it's nice to look at, I guess. If if you have to, if I had to pick up who'd be my favorite member, it'd be Ji Hyo. She's just she's an alpha element. She's legitimately gorgeous. So yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna make this quick because I'm not a connoisseur of K-pop, but um, the year of yes. Yeah, thank you again, Alex, for getting me this. I, I I appreciate anything given to me. So, yeah, on to the next one. This book was another gift given to me by a friend, and I won't look at this too in depth since it has a bit of you know not safe for work type material. So, it's the Monster Girl Encyclopedia. Once again, I can explain. A friend was going to throw this out. It was a display copy, and I think they got the second volume for this. But um, I think they're gonna trash this. So my friend just gave it to me because I don't know why. So I'm gonna be very slow, like because I'm gonna have to censor things here. Jesus Christ! I don't want to edit too much. This goes with the monsters. Oh my God, I'm so nervous because ugh, whatever. Screw it. Yeah, it basically goes over the monsters. Yeah, oh my god, I'm gonna censor so much. It basically goes over different types of monsters, like the classic monster girl trope. Didn't I make an entire anime about this monster mystery? I'm being transparent, I have it, so. Yeah, monster girl encyclopedia. That's all I'm gonna look at it for now. So yeah, on to the next one. Next, we have. Fashion illustration inspiration and technique by Anna Kuiper. 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 No. 
I, th I got this because one, I'm, I'm a sucker for colorful illustrations, but I really like stylized work. It goes over the. Now these are like specific por proportions. If you're doing like for into fashion illustration, like this is a full ten heads, ten heads. Because I guess most model bodies with are tall figures, especially with long, slender legs. But I'm more I'm more into this book for um, the coloring and the rendering and the stylistic. Like this is very like aesthetically pleasing to look at. Maybe. Like these remind me of um, Amino actually the artist well the logo and he does some slight character designs for Final Fantasy games. He's like the he's like the original artist for Final Fantasy, I would say. And yeah, this one's a gyro from Steel Ball One. Um, um yeah, definitely I definitely plan to study from this book one day. Nice like textures, markers, pencils, coloring solids, materials. But um yeah. That was fashion illustration techniques, or oh, yeah, inspiration technique. On to the next one, which I think is going to be the last one. So for the last art book I have, it's a bit arbitrary, but it's John Singer Sargent, Portraits in Charcoal. Now, when we think of artists that like you guys should study, this is one. They see Line Decker is one. The you know the original masters. Yeah, I would I would have say having a book with their work is definitely something you'd want to, you know, something nice to look at to get the creative juices flowing. Now this book in particular is really an art book, I would say, because <clears throat> it's very wordy. It, it talks mainly about his history, but it has like some pictures of portraits he's done, and th these are always nice to look at, like if you want to study really good portrait work. And yeah, realism is something that I still need to work on, so having a book uh, with someone that has definitely reached, I would say, the pinnacle of portraiture is nice to have, to at least look in terms of reference towards. But um, yeah, this is definitely more of a history book than an art book, definitely. It's going to be wordy. But, you know, as I mentioned, it's always nice to have a book or something like that from an artist like him. I definitely need to find a book for J.C. Leindecker because I really like his artwork too. But anyway, that is it. That is all my art books. Actually, I should have lied. I have two more art books that I'm going to look at. However, I'm not going to look at it at this video. I'm going to be starting a new video series called like Art Book Overview or Review. Oh, I'm still deciding on the name. And it's because I just got these two art books. Ogre Ito's Sky and Blast, or Sky Ant and Blast, which I'm not gonna call it that. But um, yes, as I said, I'm not gonna be looking at these art books in this video, mainly because I'm gonna be doing a video series talking about any new art books that I'm gonna be looking at in the future, since I do collect a lot of these. So I thought, why not? As I get new art books, I open them and go over them with, with you guys. And um, for these videos that I'm going to be doing, it's definitely going to be a more in-depth look at it. Like for the past, like these few art books I looked at in these videos. In this video, um, it was very quick, very brief, just a quick flip through. These videos are going to be like pa mostly page to page, like analyzing every page and just admiring the art book. But, um, yeah, that video is going to come up very soon since I'm probably going to record the video for these art books right after I finish editing this video. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, I've been saying that I'd be do this, I'll do this video for a long time, but um, I just needed the right equipment. Thank you, William, for getting me this phone stand. Um, I really needed this so I could get the nice like angle for my phone. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, let me know any art books that you want, you like, or any art books you want to take a deeper look at. Maybe I could make a video looking at that art book specifically, if I can find it. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.